What's up guys? So today we're starting a very cool project for a customer of ours, Nolan Schutz and his company, No Stone Manufacturing. Nolan recently purchased a Sile X9 from us and while we're waiting for his machine to be delivered, we decided to partner with him and program and machine the first five assemblies, which is an intake manifold for an OM648 Mercedes diesel engine. So today we're gonna to be machining the first component in the series, which is the base flange. So stay with me while I show you the entire process of machining this part. And we gotta give a big shout out to Champagne Metals who provided all the material for this project. If you have any aluminum needs such as sheet, coil, plate, or even painted aluminum, check them out at champagnemetals.com. All right, so once we've probed everything, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm coming in with a one inch drill and I'm gonna drill out each one of these pockets. So I'm actually gonna drill out on one side and then step over and drill out another hole. So I'll have two holes in each one of these, getting out the most material that this drill can get out. All right, so the next tool that's coming in is our half inch core five roughing tool. Now this is gonna rough out basically the entire shape of this first off. So we're getting after it pretty good on this. You can see we're actually roughing at 300 inches a minute and 9,000 RPMs. But we're not getting too crazy with our step over to make sure that we got enough torque and horsepower to push that tool through this material. So it seems like tariffs are a big topic right now. And we wanna let you know that the tariffs are not affecting the price or delivery of these machines. So if you're interested, hit up Keith at Keith at timesofcnc.com. So the last tool that's gonna to come in now is our half inch chamfer mill. It's just gonna deburr everything and then put this large chamfer around the outside of the part. Then we're gonna come in with our Kinemetal chip fan, blow all our chips away. All right, so now op one is done. I'm gonna go ahead and run the rest of these and then we're gonna pull it out and take my hard jaws off. Then we'll put the soft jaws in and machine them for op two. So even though this part is pretty simple, I'm still gonna run it through cam assist because it's gonna be able to throw all this tool path on there way faster than I'll, I'll be able to. Now there's a couple things that I'm going to do that cam assist is not gonna recognize, at least at this point. Stay tuned for that because later in the year, they've got a very big update that I'm not supposed to talk about. All right, in just a couple minutes, cam assist has thrown all its tool path on there. And now I can go in and start customizing this how I want it. So let me take you through how we're gonna hold this for op two. So we're gonna take advantage of these bosses that are standing up here, and we're essentially gonna hold onto those, making sure that we don't squeeze it too tight. And we're also gonna take advantage of this bottom floor here. So what that's gonna look like, if I turn my jaws on, I'm gonna make something like this. Now, again, like I said earlier, we would not be doing this if we were doing it in a production environment, but we've only got five of these to make, so we're just gonna make soft jaws like this to get this job done. Now, I do want the ability to be able to take these out and put them back in in case we do wanna do a low run, so I'm planning on giving these to Nolan. So, knowing that, there's a couple things that I want to do to make sure that we can locate these when we put them back into our machine. So the biggest thing you might notice here is that the back jaw is one solid piece. That's going to ensure that all of these pockets are perfect and we won't have any mismatch. So we're going to space our vices out 12 inches and then we're gonna put these jaws in and machine these profiles. Now I'm gonna oversize the holes so we have a little bit of leeway if our vices aren't perfectly spaced out. And I'm also gonna put a slot on both sides here. That way we can locate the movable jaws. So all we'd have to do is come in and indicate this wall 
for this one and indicate the wall on this one in order to get our two movable jaws set right. Now again, this is only if we want to put these back in in a later date. Now another thing that I'm gonna do for this is I'm going to elongate basically all but one of these pockets. Let me show you, hopefully you can see this, what this looks like. I wanna kinda of use these pockets or these bosses to locate, but I really only need one of them to locate. If I tried to do it on all of these, it would be over constrained. So on one of these, I'm making it to where it barely slips in. And on all of the others, I'm going to basically elongate them on both sides to make sure that we don't over constrain it. And the last thing I'm gonna make sure on these is that I come in with my face mill and deck the entire top of all three jaws to make sure that we're sitting flat down on the top. Now you remember from op one how I said that we run a finish pass on these two slots on the end. We're gonna use the one on the far left side now that we know that that's a good machine surface to the, all the features that's on the first op. We're gonna use that to set our work offset for op two. I'm just gonna come in and do a web for Y and X and then I know that this part should be located perfectly every time. And if you remember, we're also gonna run a finish pass on this slot on the far right side in case we want to put an indicator in for a sanity check to make sure that this part is not skewed. And the last thing that we need to make sure of is that we don't end up putting way too much pressure when we're clamping on this. So these pockets are all the way through, right? And this kind of got a thin wall. So the last thing we want to do is over tighten these and start distorting our part. So with that being said, let's start making a fixture. First thing this tool is going to do is that half inch end mill that we used on op one. So it's going to come in and remove the excess stock, that half that's around this part. So after we get that excess material away, we have to come back in here and rough these uh, fillets out. So it's going to rest rough that material and then we can come in with our facing tool and rough that excess stock on the top. So now we're gonna come in with that face mill and deck that excess material on top. But I want you guys to pay attention to the RPMs that I'm gonna run for this tool. Now, you see here I'm running 5,000 RPMs. Now, typically running this tool at 10,000 RPMs, but like I've talked about in some of the previous videos with our X9, you really need to know where your torque and horsepower is for your machine. So we know that the torque and horsepower is a lot more on the lower RPM side of this machine. And I'm coming in with that three inch face mill and nearly taking a full width cut here. Now I could break that up since this face really isn't doing anything. I could break that up and take two passes, but I just chose to go one pass all the way across this. It drops down the next level, it comes back across. So, and knowing that I'm nearly full width in between these pockets. So as you saw, we're gonna really start ramping up on the, the amount of torque and horsepower needed to drive that tool at the depth of cut that I'm taking. So knowing that, I'm dropping those RPMs down to 5,000 
so I can access more horsepower and more torque. And just check out these finishes that I'm getting off the style machine. These things have really been impressive, especially now that they got the Cinemeric 828 control. Which, speaking of, I want to show you one of my favorite things about a Cinemeric control. The next tool that's going to run is my chip fan. One thing I love about the Cinemeric control is that I can name the tools whatever I want. For instance, my chip fan, I've named Barry. So, no matter what machine I go to, if I see Barry, I know that I've got a fan. Now I don't have to remember what 204 is because I can just name it what I want. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these machines, make sure you check out titansofcnc.com or contact Keith directly at keith at titansofcnc.com. All right, so that's it for this first component in this series. This is the base flange again. The next part we're gonna make is the intake flange. So it's gonna get a lot more intricate. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, we'll see y'all on the next one.